The second car I owned was a bright orange 72 Volvo GT. And there aren't many of them in the world anymore. And for those of you who frequent Smucker Road, you can recall, maybe, if you noticed, by a barn on Smucker Road, there was a orange 1972 Oval GT sitting in the weeds. And as time goes by, you tend to, to get rid of those first cars, but deep down you always still want them. And so I went, after I had gotten rid of my car, and I realized, man, I, I would love to have another one of those. I stopped by this, this fellow who had it parked out in the weeds, out by the barn. And I said, hey, would you, would you ever consider selling that? And he said, no. No. I really, I think I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let it rust over here. I'm just gonna let it decay. I'm gonna let it rot. Because I want to. That made me kind of mad. How God views you when He gives you a talent, when He gives you something you can do, and you say, no, 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 I, I think I'll just let it rot. I know you gave it to me, God, but I don't think I'm going to use this talent for your kingdom right now. Now, let me just say this. Here at SMC, we have shockingly talented folks. We have shockingly talented folk who are volunteering in the kitchen, in the nursery, in the Sunday school classes, up front, leading, singing, doing calls to worship, doing all kinds of things. And I want to say thank you so much to each of you who volunteer so much to make ministry happen. But there may be some of you who may have untapped talents that you haven't volunteered for. My question is to you, are you ready to bring your talent to the Lord and say, Lord, I want to use this for kingdom building. Now this is the other thing. We can always ask for more talents. There are needs at our church right now that aren't being met. Perhaps God is going to drop a new talent in your life and you'll discover it through volunteering here at SSC. What would that talent be? What do you need to ask for? And when God gives it to you, will you use it? Let's jump to our next text. That's number two. The first T was talent. Now we're going to give you the truth about time. The truth about time. That's number two. I'm going to have you turn over to Mark 13. That's the book right next door. This is a short book. Mark chapter 13. I'm going to do a lot of moving around in your text today. It's a little chilly in here and I love it. So maybe moving your fingers so much. I love the chill. Okay, thank you. Mark chapter 13, verses 32 through 37. Did you get there yet? Can the candy's all been in? Was there enough? Did anybody not get candy? Alright. Mark chapter 13, verses 32 through 37. No one knows about the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the sun but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with his assigned task, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or at dawn. He comes suddenly. Do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. 2A. One of the nuggets I think we come to realize about time is time will run out. Time will run out. There's a popular idea that's been floating around for a long time that time on this earth as we know it just continues forever. 
it continues forever. The, the, the world we live in, the world we know, will just continue on and on. That is not a biblical view. The Bible is very clear. There is a distinct beginning to this world. There will be a distinct end to the world as we know it. Time will end. And each and every day, we get a little closer to it. Now, no one knows when the time will end. I remember back the year I graduated, there was a little book that came out, 88 Reasons. The Lord was coming back in 1988. And there were some people that got really fired up about that. And I had a friend who called me up because the, the author had figured out that the year and the month and the day, and they called me up and they just said, hey, we just want to make sure you're right with the Lord because tomorrow. And I said, I'm okay. I'm right with the Lord. And tomorrow came. And then the next day came. And the next day came. Time will run out, but no one knows when that's be. No one knows when time will cut out. Rather, we are to keep active and see, oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. How's the song with, oh, you better watch out? How am I telling you why not change it? Jesus Christ is coming to town. So what should we be doing? What should we be doing? We should be volunteering. We should be active. We should be watching and waiting. But at the same time, doing the things that He would have us to do. You better watch out. Because you don't want to be caught sleeping. Now folks, what does sleeping mean? It doesn't mean that you should not sleep. Although there are, I know there are some people here that are struggling with that. You should sleep. Sleep means not doing God's work. Not doing kingdom building. No. Time is short, yet shockingly regular. You will have the same 168 hours this week as you had last week. 24 hours a day, 7 days in a week, that's 168 hours. My question to you is simply this. How much of that time are you giving to God? Now, generally speaking, about 50 hours of that, 168, I hope you spend sleeping. That's about 7 hours a night. It'll be good. Some people need a little less, some people need a little more. A lot of folks here, I'm thinking, are probably working in some way or at school in some way, doing something about another 50 hours a week. Those are your active hours. But then, 50 plus 50 is 100, and you have 168. What are you doing with those other 68 hours? Can I suggest that you would give a portion of that to God? Your most precious, non-renewable resource, I would like for you to offer to God in His service. And even more so, volunteering to give a tithe of your time to building a relationship with Him. What does that mean? May I suggest that you tithe your 50 hours of active work or school. A tithe is 10%. Can you give five hours of your life voluntarily to building your relationship with God? What does that look like? That looks like 30 minutes a day, every day, for six days. And then two hours on Sunday. 